All right. Welcome to another episode of Connect and Politic. We're here with a special guest. Please introduce yourself by telling us your name, where you're currently located, and your favorite snack. Oh my. Hi, everyone. My name is Muranga Mwafe, and I currently live in South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa. My favorite snack, I would have to say chip. Um, yeah, I'd go with that. How are you, Mike? Chip? What kind of chip? I love salt and vinegar. Oh my gosh. And I, I don't know if my mom was eating a lot of salt and vinegar chips while she was pregnant with me. Probably not. But I have loved salt and vinegar chips since I was a child and I just can't get over them. I know people don't necessarily like that. Those two things together, it's very salty. It leaves you feeling very dry, dry mouthed. Um, but I love it. I love it. Is this Do you a, eat any potato chips? I feel like you wouldn't eat potato yeah. chips. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't. I, You're like, I, I, but what I, about, I, you know, they make veggie potato chips. So no, sometimes so. I like, like, <laughs> like <laughs> kale chips. I like kale chips too with sweet potato chips. Uh, no. Okay. No, I mean, mm. no, I mean for, for snacks, uh, I like uh, a mix of cashews and pistachios. Um, okay, fine. That's, that's my go-to. You win. <laughs> Guess what though? Pistachios are so expensive in South Africa. Pistachios, almonds, um, kind of like those exotic luxury nuts are very expensive here. Like you could get like a little bag. I don't know what a little bag is, like a 15 grams. Like a, a little bag, <laughs> a little bag mm. could be like $10. And you're just like, for what though? Really? Because yeah, like we, I think we only plant peanuts. Uh -huh. So those are cheap. So we, you know, you, you, you'll see a lot of um, raisins and peanuts at grocery stores and stuff, but like almonds, you're going to be paying lots of money. What, what about, what about cashews? Are cashews expensive as well? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I would think, yeah. you know, because Madagascar. And cranberries. Yeah. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, what was your favorite food as a child? My favorite thing is taking me to childhood. My favorite food as a child. Can it be a fruit? I used to love yeah. guavas. Like, I don't know why. Like, I loved guava. Give me the guava, like the fruit itself, or guava juice. Oh my goodness. Every time my grandfather came to visit or he saw me, um, he'd be like, okay, what do you want me? What do you want me to bring you next time? I was always like guava juice or guavas. Like, and apparently because of that, he might have planted a whole bunch of guavas in his orchard. <laughs> I never knew this. I never knew this until recently, actually, because this is the season for guavas. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, my grandfather passed away in Jen. So as the family's been going through his estate and, and figuring all that stuff out, I guess they were in the orchard because we, we normally don't really go to his orchard. He just kind, kind of like gathers everything and brings it to the house, you know, the mangoes, whatever. Yeah. So I guess now everybody's in the orchard trying to see, ooh, the land, you know, what's on the land. And apparently there's a lot of guavas. So everybody's like, maybe he did this for you. So I'm like, oh. So yeah, that was definitely my favorite thing nice. to eat or drink. Yeah. I mean, so you should have a uh, priority on that land then. Well, probably the guava trees are probably like the minority. I think the majority of the orchard is really mangoes. Like he loved mangoes and he had like every kind of mango type you can have 
I'm over exaggerating, but that's how it felt. <laughs> you know, like we, if you ever were, if you ever came to the house and you just said you wanted mangoes, he would drive you to his orchard and he would take you all around telling you, you know, the difference between this and that, this one is sweeter because of that. And da, 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 like he, yeah. So I feel like whoever, encouraged him to plant mangoes that person <laughs> <laughs> the orchard belongs to that person <laughs> i don't know uh, i don't know it's, it's a battle know. it's a battle um it's a battle man what's your favorite meal now as an adult my favorite meal as an adult oh wait but so we can't talk about the in-between <laughs> wait so now from, from, jumping like from fruit yeah. No, no, because you said you so, said as a as a kid, your favorite a, food was yeah. guava. And also, I'll just add like the reason I even just said it was guava as opposed to like food. Food, I really didn't like food, so yeah. And huh. then there was like I had this phase. Probably the t by the time I'm meeting you guys, I was really, really crazy about Thai food. Uh -huh. I still am a bit you know, crazy about Thai food. But now that I'm back in South Africa and the thing I missed the most, I love lamb. Like that's the only red meat I love. I hate beef. I don't know why, don't ask me, but I love lamb and I know lamb is more fattening and stuff, but it's just so good. And for whatever reason, like lamb in South Africa is so good. Wait, you don't eat red meat, do you? No. I forgot. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. You'll never understand. <laughs> it's so delicious. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No, I, I love I, I anything get it. You know, lamb. I, I, I've, I heard, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. A couple of our friends I'm love lamb you. as well. Um, really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember in, um, in, uh, where were we? In Morocco. Uh, Alvin, oh. I mean, him and Yemisi, they, they went in. They're going crazy. <laughs> on the lamb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Lamb is, you don't know what you're missing. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. So you're lamb, saying yeah. your, your favorite meal now is lamb. Is so anything with lamb. And right? when, was the, when was the last time you had anything. something with lamb? Um, Probably a while ago. A while ago, right now we're eating a lot of beef um, because as tradition, when my grandparents passed away, each of them passed away, they have to slaughter a cow and then they divide the cow into the different families, the kids. So we have so much beef here. Like we're going to be eating beef for like the rest of the year. I'm like, dang. So like, because there's so much beef, like nobody wants to buy anything else. You know, it's like, why are we going to buy meat? I'm like, dang. Um, and I can't be like, I don't like this beef because it's like, but that was your grandfather's cow. You know, yeah, so it's like, yeah. oh. Yeah, but wow. I think it might have been last year. That's kind of crazy. Wow. Yeah, definitely sometime last year. Probably December-ish or the beginning of January, I think. And, and when yeah. you have lamb uh, dishes, <laughs> is it uh, homemade or you going out to eat? It can be either. I've become such a good cook, Mike. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 you're, like a, you're, you're all around uh, chef now, huh? I'm, nice. I'm, I'm doing good. things in the kitchen, Mike. That's good. Anyway, that's good. Um, yeah, you know, either or. I mean, I still love um, discovering new restaurants. So uh -huh. anytime, like if, you know, the newest spot in Cape Town or whatever, if there's lamb on that menu, I'm like, okay, I'm going to judge you by how much i enjoyed this lamb dish that you have to offer yeah nice what was your fondest memory from childhood Dang. do you remember your childhood <laughs> <laughs> memories from childhood uh, 
<laughs> you know what? No, 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 no. But Mike, okay. All jokes aside, right? I feel like I had the best childhood ever. Like, I, I don't know about other kids. Like all of my childhood was really, really exciting. Um, I think it's because my mom and I really got to just have fun. But my birthdays, I think my birthdays were a bit epic. Um, she literally threw a birthday for me every single year until we moved to the U.S. And those birthdays were so nutty because, I mean, I could be turning four and like all my cousins <laughs> had to come. <laughs> like, like they had no choice whether like I'm talking about cousins who are like 10 11 they uh, had to come to my birthday party because Miranda is having a birthday party and grandma's like everybody in the car and then my older cousins would also bring like their random friends obviously I don't know so it'd be like this pot this toss salad of these random little kids together you know it's bound to get crazy you know there's always the kid teaching everybody new things like oh this is a new dance this is a new game this is you know so my birthday parties were always very very fun so yeah. I remember those yeah and then um you came here and went to high school Right. I mean, here meaning middle US. school. Oh, yeah. Middle school. I came, yeah, in seventh grade. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what were you like in high school? High school, high school. I feel like I was cool. <laughs> 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 uh, you, you, you were the cool uh, South African in. Uh, and okay, in Michigan. I'm going to be honest. No, I'm going to be honest on this show here today, <laughs> okay? I think, like, how people viewed me, I think I came off as cool, but uh, inwardly, I was always a bit shy. Like, I've always been a bit shy, and I think that makes me move a bit slower, like a bit, I'm a bit, yeah, like I'm just a bit slower or something. Um, so... Like I hung out with all the cool people. But I was always, I think internally, I was always questioning, like, am I cool enough to be hanging out with these cool people? Although I would be currently standing there with them, hanging out with them, you know? So I, I don't really know if I should be classifying myself as I was a really cool kid, you know, in in my high school. And the fact that I, I was South African, unfortunately wasn't that unique because the high school really did attract a lot of international um, students because the school was um, connected to the university. So it was like the, you know, it was a university. I mean, the parents who yeah. went to the university pretty much sent their kids to this high school. So there's a lot of us South Africans, Ethiopians, Zimbabweans, just you name it. So the fact that I was African wasn't necessarily like, oh, she's cool or whatever, but I think I'm a cool person. <laughs> anyway, but I definitely was shy. I won't lie about that. I was shy. So maybe I came off a little quiet or what, but maybe there's some people my quietness was standoffish. I don't know. Mm. It could have been seen that way. I don't know. But you saw yourself as cool in high school. I like saw if myself you were, as If you were cool. to describe yourself, you'd be like, yeah, I was, I was one of the cool kids. Yeah, yeah. I was definitely... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't hard for me to make friends you know and I, I thought it I, I mean if you're a freshman and you have friends who are juniors and seniors I, I think you'll think you're cool you know like they let you hang out with them during lunch and after school or whatever and then you're like okay I'm not bad I'm not bad I can hang with older kids you know because you know when we're little we're always wishing we could get older quicker and now that I'm older, I'm like, why? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> they really, really lied to us. They never yeah. told us being yeah. an adult is a whole other thing, you know. So yeah, you know, um, so you grew up partially in South Africa. Um, your early mm -hmm. childhood was in South Africa, and then you transitioned to the U.S. So, how do you think your childhood helped groom you into the person you are today? my childhood in South Africa. Well, like I said, I was shy prior to moving. I think I was relatively shy prior to moving to the US. And I think then going to the US, only just with my mom, I have no siblings, there's no cousins going to my same school, whatever, I had to kind of come out of my shell, you know, like I had to come out of my shell, I had to be more um, opinionated, more talkative, more expressive, and all those things. Um, that probably, I'm thinking that happens to a lot of African kids who then, you know, were born in Africa, moved to the U.S., you become very opinionated. Anyway, I think I did become very outspoken and opinionated um, because I was in this new environment and I felt like there was nobody there to fend for me. So I had to like kind of fend for myself. Um, and, you know, I, I grew up in a Christian household. So I think that really shaped my life. I mean, even in high school, um, there was a lot of going to Wednesday Bible service and all these things, you know, like high school students don't necessarily grow up that way, but that's how I grew up. But I think it kept me grounded. It kept me grounded. It kept me grounded. And it's, it's definitely, I mean, my, my Christianity has definitely influenced the way I think about things, how I view things, how I approach things in my life um and things like that so yeah did i answer your question yeah, yeah yeah um so you 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 know you mentioned you grew up with your mom and no siblings um yeah do you want to do you want to get into why yeah Okay. I'm an adult now. I can talk about these things without <laughs> feeling weird. So I was sharing this with a with a childhood friend of mine, actually, like, you know, not not too long ago. We're catching up. I haven't seen him since we were like little. I'm talking about like kindergarten and stuff. Uh -huh. And I was saying to him that when I moved to the U.S., I was so embarrassed to explain to other little kids where my father was I don't know what what about my you know my history about my dad <laughs> like I, I don't know why I would be embarrassed or why I thought that would be embarrassing but I actually did have a hard time when when I first moved to the U.S. and kids would ask me where's your father I literally would lie and I would Oops. just say he's back home Wow. And my mom got so pissed at me. I don't know how she found out. <laughs> That's what I was telling uh, like people when they asked me. Probably a teacher asked me, and then I just said he was home. And she felt so offended um, that I would say that because she was like, we're in the U.S., and I don't want people ever thinking that your dad is just this deadbeat dad, you know, or he's incarcerated and I'm this single mother. But Anyway, so I was born July 5th, 1981. I feel like I have to tell the story this way. I'm so dramatic. Oh. <laughs> no, but it will make sense why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, 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 anyway, yeah, yeah. so I was uh -huh. born in 81 and um, my dad was a pastor, um, but also an insurance guy. And he was an activist above all of that he was an activist and he really just felt like he you know he felt a call in his life to help join the struggle to to contribute and try you know to speak against apartheid and so because of that then you know he 
basically talking out against apartheid, he put a target on his back. And so in 81, there was a police station bombing. He actually wasn't even around when it happened. So where he lived in the town we lived in, Payendo and Venda, there was a police station bombing in the middle of the night. He wasn't even there. He's out in a different, he's in Durban, which is probably like 20 hours driving from, you know, where we lived. Um, and, but right away when that happened, the police were just like, Chifua Mofe, he did it. He's the guy. He's a terrorist. We know, you know, he's had nothing but bad things to say about the current government, about apartheid, all this and the other. And so as soon as he gets back home, police have already been sent to arrest him. He gets arrested. And this is 81. So this was um, pre- um, this is apartheid time, so there was no, you know, let's go to court. Um, you were, you were, there was no innocent till proven guilty. You were just guilty. And so he got arrested. He got beaten to death, although they, you know, their story is definitely different from what obviously they did to him. They beat him to death. And so, yeah, I was just four months old. Um, and that was bad. And my mom had to start the journey. I mean, right after he passed away, first of all, she didn't know where they took him. I mean, where they, yeah, she didn't know where they took him. They wouldn't say where he was. She had to spend like three days just running up and down looking for her husband. And they've, they'd just been married for two years about maybe. So this is like a very, very young couple, young marriage, you have an infant at home, and then this man is just gone, you know, and, and yeah. Should I say more? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, yeah, but, I, I think um, maybe you, you want to say I mean, I don't want to tell your story, but because uh, <laughs> I, I could have just done, I could have just done your interview, you know, like I could just be on the other side, just <laughs> ask the question and just answer them. Um, but no, no, I, I mean, the, maybe the only thing I think is important because, you know, when you say, you know, he was um, uh, an activist, it may not, right. it may not, uh, you know, viewers or listeners may not understand the magnitude of what, you know, what that means. And, um, you know, it's essentially the, the way, you know, he, he was a part of the ANC and, you know, the, the, was, way, the way people right. think of Nelson Mandela or Biko or Tutu, et cetera, they're all, you know, they're all, boys or peers same or. whatsapp group yeah he's he's in there with those guys you know he he yeah he, he <laughs> there's actually an interesting um historical connection i just recently over the years just found out um in 1976 um there was the soweto uprising where uh some south african um, high schoolers decided to go on strike because they were just sick and tired of the lack of infrastructure the lack of access to books the lack of good teachers resources and all of that they, that they were getting and they just felt like they were not being given the best education that they should be. Mm -hmm. So they decided to go on strike. And because of that, a lot of, of, of students that day died because there was like this clash of the high schoolers and the police. Um, lots of tear gassing, lots of uh, bullets flying all over the place. What I didn't know is that, so the current president of the country <laughs> and my father were best friends. So what had happened was the night before my dad had somehow felt he wanted to go visit his friend, Cyril, the president Cyril. <laughs> so weird to like, I'm like, uncle Cyril. <laughs> um, my dad decided he was gonna drive all the way from Venda to Johannesburg to go visit his friend Cyril. 
And so he arrives there very, very late at night. They stay up talking and they're just having fun, whatever, you know, shooting the breeze. And then at 3 a.m. in the morning, they just hear police just knocking on the door like crazy. They open the door and right away the police go to arrest Uncle Cyril because they he had already he was in their radar already, you know, they're like, this guy is no good or whatever. Cause again, he was also an activist, um, very, very involved in the ANC, very, very involved in the struggle. And so they see this other man who's my dad and they're like, who's this man? And he's like, oh, I'm walking. They're like, no, you're not. So Tsietsi Mashinini was the mastermind behind the Soweto uprising. And they were now looking for him. But if you look up, a picture of Sieti Mashinini, he looks just like my father, uncanny. So they looked at him, they said, no, you're not. You're the guy we've been looking for. So they arrested him on the spot. Both of them taken to, to jail. Uncle Cyril served six, um, six months um, in solitary confinement. My dad was, I think like a week later or something like that, he was released. Um, after they found that, yeah, he was actually telling the truth or whatever. So anyway, I'm just telling the, the, that story to just say, like, these guys were very involved in the struggle. Like, they were really speaking up against it. They were, you know, having meetings <laughs> and colluding against, no, I, and colluding against mm. the apartheid regime, mm. you know. And even things like um, they would, so you couldn't buy um, political books, like they, they, they had no access. Well, they had no access because they couldn't buy any like really good political books, like black power books or anything like that. So they had to literally cross the border and go to Botswana or Swaziland, um, to, to do that. But on the way back, there were always roadblocks. Um, at the borders just to check, you know, are you bringing any forbidden books into the country? You know, are you going to try to radicalize young people and, you know, black young people to stand up against us or whatever. Um, and, but they would, they would figure out ways to smuggle these books, you know, cause that's how hungry they were. They wanted to know like, you know, what is Malcolm? X in them talking about like Martin Luther King and them like what speech did he give wherever he gave it and what did he say like what's happening out there that we can maybe take and use down here in our war really against apartheid so no th these are serious guys who were serious about life <laughs> and they definitely they felt strongly um, that they had to lead the charge to, you know, get their, their fellow black South Africans free from apartheid. So, you know, yeah. the, the, I don't know if you know this, but what you, the, the story you just uh, said about the Soweto uprising and, you know, uh, yeah. Uncle Cyril and your dad being arrested. It's in, uh, have you seen Serafina? Yeah. You know that Wait, it's, it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so actually, you know, there was. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know. Like in the middle of the night. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, because uh, I want to say a couple of years ago, I was I, I was rewatching it or whatever, and then I mean I saw that scene, etc. And then uh, at the end, you know, when the credits are rolling or you know whatever it is, your dad name uh, comes up. As comes well. up. And yeah. I was like. I was like, oh, I wonder if this Malaga even, you know, even know. But anyway. Um. But that's the thing. I think I, I, I will say this about my upbringing. I think because it happened when I was four months old and yeah. it was so brutal. Um, my, my mom, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, they really, I, I lived a very sheltered life. Like I was in a bit of a bubble. And I think it was because for them, it was important to, to safeguard that innocence, like let her be a child, yeah. you know, like she didn't sign up for this. So even, you know, probably the first time I watched Serafina, I was like everybody else, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like, yeah. oh, so cool. Yeah. You know? And then like, 
<laughs> I probably didn't stick around to watch the credits anyway, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. until maybe I think when Mandela got released from jail. Um, because there was like this, like in the excitement, there was also like this, like, okay, let's watch all the movies that have kind of set us up to this point, you know, like the, the fallen heroes, the people we've lost or whatever. Yeah. And there's a Beacon movie yeah. where my dad is also on the credits. And I, I remember us having to sit there and watch that, like through the credits, you know, like these are the lives that have been lost for the struggle so that we can one day see this day. So yeah, I think when I was way younger, all this was it, it was just a bit over my head, you know. Mm. I just knew he, my dad, was was a great guy fighting for the cause. Indeed, indeed. What are some of the most important lessons you've learned from your mom in particular? Just about life in general? Yeah. <sighs> um, I mean, one lesson that she definitely tried to ingrain into me is being independent. Um, because especially once you get married, okay, I'll say that, I'll emphasize it within that. K keeping your independence, um, especially when you get, even you know, after you're married, because I think for her, the very fact that like, you know, she was, newly married yeah. and they were just starting their lives it was it was a big wake wake up call um she had to go back to school because now she had to feed herself and myself take care of my me and her for the rest of her life and but probably her thinking when she entered the marriage is like okay my husband is gonna be the breadwinner and he's gonna bring in the bacon and I'm gonna do you know you know those, yeah, yeah. those gender role things so so something she's always taught me is like no listen you need to make your own money okay <laughs> even after you've gotten married you need to know how to pay the the bills okay because anything can happen you can get cheated on you can get divorced people can die and then what you're going to do so just being able to stand on your own two feet and being independent um, I think is is really one big lesson she has definitely tried to ingrain in me. Um, she's an educator and she comes from, or I come, we both come from a long line of educators. Um, so education being kind of key to opening the world for you, you know, like go to school and God knows I went to school. <laughs> Um, and now I'm done. <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike, Mike. The importance of a good education. Um, um, and then being focused, you know, like prioritizing things in your life that you are passionate about, but then being focused on, you know, prioritizing those passions and, and dealing with one thing at a time, moving on to the next, moving on to the next. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. um, no, that's good. Yeah. yeah, those are those are the main lessons. Yeah. What What are three yeah. things that you do every day, or you you would like to do every day, even if you don't get to do it? <laughs> I pray and read my Bible. What? spending time with God is important to me yes working out okay but I'm gonna be honest um it's kind of been a roller coaster in the last <laughs> year I'm not gonna lie don't laugh don't laugh don't uh. laugh like I am really really committed to being the the healthiest that I possibly can be in this decade that I am entering and I'm, I'm really committed. So like, I need to like stop being sporadic and, 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 and get back to being consistent um, with working out. 
Um, that's the second thing. And then my business. I mean, I, I, that's, that's one thing I do work on every day, including weekends. Um, some aspect of my business um, I work on every day. It's good list. Well, what are your favorite things to do for self-care? Oh, self-care. <laughs> I love to get pampered. I, I love doing my getting my nails done. I think it's it it makes me I might like it more than even going to get a massage or something. It's kind of weird. Um, so that okay, all my self-care stuff is gonna have to do with beauty. That's that's your self-care. I know, but I need to spice it up. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. You know what? Okay. If you had asked me self-care, like right after college, I would say my indulgence of those um, reality TV shows, remember? Like I had like a thing going on with those reality TV shows. I'm so glad I, I, I grew up and I... I um, I've outgrown them. I don't do that anymore. Yeah, I think my self care now revolves around like facials, <laughs> going to the dermatologist, getting stuff done, um, and cooking. And cooking. Now that I'm actually home with my mom, my aunt, I've been doing a lot more cooking and I'm actually finding it more therapeutic than I used to before I think before I definitely had like a love-hate relationship with cooking like I had to feel it like I had to get up and be like today I want to cook for the people I love you know if somebody told me like okay it's your turn to cook then it was like oh I don't cook I hate it you know but now I'm like taking initiative and like trying all these things and even I'm baking so nice. I think I've added, I, I'm adding cooking to the self-care list. Did you say three? Cause I'm pretty sure I'm just giving you all kinds of. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, that, that's a great list. Uh, yeah, you, you got your three. What and you... I also used to be like shopping and that's gone away too. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, so sh shopping is not something you, 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 you no, do? No, cause I used to do like, come on you know me you no, 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 no. and maybe it was but maybe it was also the excitement of new york i'm gonna yeah. blame new york also <laughs> because i literally would like i would thrive on finding a sample sale and like like where is it is it raining i don't care i'm getting in that line yeah. but i mean there isn't such things happening in south africa so no, but it's you, easy you, to be like okay you continue that even when you move back yeah, and then nobody wanted to send me things and people were getting sick and tired of me <laughs> sending my stuff to their houses. Oh, man. Maybe it's it's actually you guys, all my friends and some family who basically were like, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> and then I had to be like, okay, I'm being cut off. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway. Cool, yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> what are you doing for entertainment these days? You know, movies, shows, podcasts, music. It's COVID time, so everything is indoors. What am I doing? Music, definitely. Um, the South African music scene is fun for me, or the or just actually not just South African, the, the continent music scene is, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it right now. Um, when you say lately, you mean like in the past year? Because yeah. There's like the stuff I'm doing now for fun or to occupy my time during COVID lockdowns. But then there was the me before COVID lockdowns and the me before loved being outdoors. So, but Cape Town, 
affords you the ability to decide today because the sun is out and it's so beautiful. We're going to go to a wine farm. You know, we're going to get in a car and drive 30 minutes, 45 minutes to some beautiful, beautiful mountainside, you know, um, wine farm. So I used to do that. A lot of, you know, discovering of restaurants. I already mentioned that. Um, and then, oh my gosh, so I'm also very involved in like going to polo. I mean, don't ask me, you know, if I even know what's happening because I'm not there for that. <laughs> okay, nobody is there to actually watch the horses do anything, okay? Everyone is there dressed up, trying to show off and like, <laughs> whose section are you in? Like, the life I live in Cape Town is actually hilarious. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Like, people, shame. Like, people in the US, though, they're like, see my pictures on Instagram or whatever. They're like, every time I see you, you're like, heaven there's a fabulous life you're always out and about or whatever and i'm like it's cape town guys it's cape town it's 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 small it's yeah. small so you end up like seeing the same people at the same places hanging out with the you know like you just the same crews just keep going to the same things we get invited to the same stuff so um anyway yeah so like those types of events museums whatever but now Everything is indoors. Um, so what I've enjoyed doing now for fun, I've actually just enjoyed um, hanging out with family. As interesting as that might not be for people. Um, and specifically reconnecting with, with family on my dad's side. Um, I've been spending a lot of time with them. Um, in the past couple of months so it's just been fun like you know reliving all these stories and just getting reintroduced to people at this older stage um, podcasts <sighs> podcasts I don't know man <laughs> I feel like I haven't really gotten into the podcast culture yeah. um even like clubhouse i remember right before clubhouse like was all over the place a friend of mine sent me a link and they're like oh there's this thing whatever this new platform blah 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 and literally i i i did nothing <laughs> with that link i did nothing and then some random person who I met at Red Rooster in Harlem in 2013 <laughs> decided to call me a month ago on FaceTime. And they were like, it was because they were going through, yeah, like this story was so weird. They were like, they were going through like their address book and I popped up because they were trying to figure out who they should send a link to or something. And my name popped up. So they're like, oh, I haven't talked to her. I'm like, it's since 2013. Oh, so then I thought maybe it was a sign, you know, like I need to get on Clubhouse. Maybe I'm missing something. So I'm on Clubhouse, but I've never <laughs> entered the room. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, so, I, I don't know like I'm not even a spectator that I just I set myself up I went yeah. in I saw people there like oh you might want to follow this person I, I'm probably I think I'm following you are you I followed people and then I left <laughs> okay. I, I that, that's a that's a good uh that's a good plan. Yeah. You know, actually, what it reminds me, you know, um, when um, Facebook came out, right? Yeah. So when Facebook came out, remember we were, um, you know, at uh, at school when it first came out, the Facebook, right? It was only yeah, for, yeah. you know, very few colleges, right? And we, we yeah. happened to be one of them. And, um, I didn't so, even know that. I, I know it, it was it was really small. Like it was, it was. Um, there were a few folks from uh, HB uh, HBS, and that you okay. know I was in some network with, and say, oh, you know, um, 
this, this, this thing going on around campus and your school is one of the, you know, the few schools that you can, you know, you can uh, join, right? So they sent me an invite and it, it just like club, the same thing, it was an invite, you know, like somebody had to say you invite. Yeah. So anyway, so, so you join and, and there was like, cause it was so, such a small group. It was like, after, so first it was only like five schools or three schools or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And we were one of them. And then, so then I joined, I just, you know, just set up my, my page, my name, whatever it is. And then, uh, then, you know, later on, like maybe six months later, I heard they started open, open it up to other schools. Right. So then mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. you know, so then, then, you know, and you, you needed a school email address. That was the thing. Right. So, so then like, mm-hmm. you know, then I started adding, then I went back and added yep. all these other people. Then they opened it up to, you didn't even need a school email address. Said everybody. Right? Sure. Yeah. So, then, so, so I, like you, I didn't go back. So just how you're doing club. So I'll, I'll go back like a year later. Right. Mm-hmm. And I had like thousands of requests. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like all these people from like, you know, <laughs> Middle school, essentially, like like people you just met, like, like how you met yeah. that person once in Harlem or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like all these people, right? So I was like, oh, this thing is like people are really into this thing, right? So you know, so I accept all the, the <laughs> things, whatever it is, and um, and I, but I never really got into you know Facebook, uh, and so I you know obviously you know I deleted my account years ago, etc. But um. <laughs> But with so like the whole clubhouse thing reminds me of the same, you know, the same thing where uh like same thing, like people have sent me all these invites, you know, like, oh my, you should be on. Like people have actually a couple of people have asked me to do this, right? Like to um, on clubhouse. Yeah, okay. like to host to host mm. events or club. It's like, oh, I mean, you're 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 like this is like right up your alley. Um right. But then I'm like, <laughs> you know. Because at least from what I've heard from people who do Clubhouse, mm-hmm. they say, you know, sometimes they just get lost, like lost in like they they go okay. in the, into a room at nine o'clock or eight o'clock, and then in the morning no, or at, no, night. at night, say at night, and then they look at their watch <laughs> or whatever it is, and it's like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what are they doing? Because it's just it's like. It's just conversation. It, it's like you know what it is. It's like it's like listening on a conversation, right? You know what I mean? Like, and you know, it could be, you know, for a lot of the the bigger rooms, I guess, with Clubhouse is, um, you know, celebrities, right? So you know, people love right. people have this infatuation. Like, I, I could never of course people love to hear celebrities and these people talk, and um, and so yeah, so people stay hours. And just listening and really get nothing, you know, nothing done and nothing accomplished. So um, that's the clubhouse <laughs> thing. But the, the other thing I want to talk about that you brought up was uh, Cape Town. Yeah. As you know, uh, I think Cape Town is like an open secret. Do you know what I mean? I think it's one of the secrets I, I, that, go ahead. Mm-hmm. that people, that it's, it's, it's just, it's crazy to me. You know, like we've talked about this, but like, it's crazy to me how there's this place on the planet, right? That is like, is so amazing. Like just the, the just naturally, right? Like the, the you right. know, the multiple seasons, like you have multiple seasons in a day. In right? one day. In one day. Yes. And then like you, the, the, you know, the environment, like there's everything from like mountains to hills to marshland to like just beach like it's just it's like it's just it's like multiple all the great all the great things in great countries it's just in this one place right and then and then there's the so you have all of this then there's the infrastructure right where Mm -hmm. like it's is built with all the amenities of like you know all the the all the great technology technological advances and uh, architecture and all this stuff it's all in this one place right <laughs> right and so yeah but it wasn't it wasn't until you know like the other a couple of months ago when I started you know um like going deep into into it that you know it, I even realized that it's one um design like the 
design design of the year for like three years in a row in the past six years. Like the, who? Cape oh, one Town. one company. Oh, yeah. Cape Town. Cape Town. Like the architecture. The architecture. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's like okay. it's just no, I believe it. it. It's and I so, believe it. And so I just keep saying totally. to myself, this is an open secret. This is like, and then like the more you do research about it, <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, this, this is like this is the people who know, they they're kind of like keeping it to themselves, etc. So I've been on this campaign. I'm like, I'm like the Cape everybody Town. To Cape Town. Yeah, I'm like the Cape Town like uh ambassador Listen. out here. I'm just like, yo. And 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 the thing is, even just continuing on about the 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 architecture, the real estate, like you would think because of COVID and the lockdowns or whatever, you know, it would have really affected the real estate industry. Oh no. In Cape Town, there are so many new developments that are well, they claim they're opening next year, like buy this investment, you know, one bedroom studio here, you know, it's in the middle of town, it's five minutes to the ocean and da, da, da. I'm just like, oh my God, like you get your pick. Okay, where, where around the mountain do you want to live? You, know you get your pick. <laughs> you don't understand. Like, like, it, like, you know how people own Clubhouse and spend it eight hours or whatever it is? That's me. That's me on these on these real estate. It's like, like I'm just like, look, it's, it's, it's too much. And like, you have dollars. Is, yes. You have dollars. So yes. you are actually, you, you could come, you could fly to Cape Town, get off, and leave with an apartment. Easy. Or a house. Easy. Done. Easy. I mean, and they love foreigners, okay? Like, easy. just bring all that money. <laughs> like, what do you want? You want two of them? Like, easy, we can just like, break the wall. Easy, give easy. It to you. I'm t- like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really crazy. It's, I'm just like, it's just crazy. Like, this, the, the, that's the only way to explain it. It's like, you know, the only thing I could come up with was like, this is an open secret. Like, and um, the more I research, I realized like, <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that's what this is. It's like there's people out here enjoying Kip Cape Town and just keeping it as a secret. Like people because, know, and they're like, Shh. yeah, <laughs> just yeah. actually own mansions, like prime real estate overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. They don't even live there. Like they come there maybe once a year, okay? But just so they have that prime real estate yeah. when they want to come party, let their hair down or whatever. What is it? It's a five hour, five and a half hour flight, you yeah. know? So... Cape Town, man. Cape Town is where it is. And the funny thing is, before before we had internet, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. (laughs) Everything was breaking there. Before we moved to the U.S., I had actually never been to Cape Town. So I, I lived in South Africa for 12 years, left South Africa, never have had been to Cape Town, visited South Africa. Then I got the chance to visit Cape Town maybe in 2000 or 2001, something like that. It was my very first time going there. And so when I returned and then I had to figure out where do I want to live, everyone was like, no, you're from New York. You're going to love it in Joburg. It's like right up your alley. What? Nah, nah, nah. I went to Joburg for six months. I was like, get me out. <laughs> like, <laughs> Get me out of here. You know what the problem was? I had to, I realized this for myself. I love, I'm one of the people who loves New York for, for what it is. You know, the dirty, smelly, fast life, expensive, whatever. I love New York, right? Um, and so, unfortunately, anytime I go to another big city where it's supposed to be fast or whatever, I'm always comparing it to New York. And for me, it was a bit frustrating because I'm like, okay, yeah, Joburg is faster than Cape Town, but it's nowhere fast <laughs> than New York, right? Yeah. So I was still like, things are so slow here. You guys, this is fast. It's so slow. Like it was giving me California vibes and they're like, Joburg, it's so fast. So then I decided, you know what? I would actually rather be by the ocean 
so let, let's just go to the ocean. <laughs> like, where's the ocean here, you know? And so I literally was just like, how do I get to Cape Town? Okay, I want to go do my MBA. It was the only school I applied to. Now everybody in my family knows that it was the only school I applied to. <laughs> If they watch this they get to find out the truth because I definitely lied I like literally did not want to go anywhere else but Cape Town and then I fell in love with it man I was like why don't people live here you it's know it's funny the um like if you if you search on YouTube uh Cape Town you see a lot of videos of, of with uh folks talking about traveling to Cape Town or visiting Cape Town or um like moving to Cape Town, um, right? But here's the thing. It's it's like it's real wild because initially, like when when a lot of those videos are South Africans in a, in Nigeria, <laughs> in Jay, like in another place, oh. going to and, and, and it's like, and I was like, the first couple of times they just called me off guard. I was just like, and they're talking about this place, like, you know, and I was like, it's someplace else. Yeah, yeah. Like it literally, you know. And then it occurred to me, I was like, well, I guess it's the same, you know, like there's people who are making content about moving to DC or moving to New York or moving to Cali, but they, you know, they live in North Carolina or Atlanta or whatever it is. Um, but no, yeah, Cape Town is, um, it's, it's, uh, it's an open secret. Um, no, and, and it's interesting. I mean, even with what you're saying, you'll find people in Joburg come Christmas time their big plans are this vacation. Where are they going? Cape Town. And that blows my mind. I'm like, okay, 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 fine. Granted, it is a beautiful, you know, vacation spot to go to. It is, for us, Christmas is, is summertime. So it's like beach season. So I guess yeah. like, I mean, why go to an island yeah. if you could just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go within your country? But that makes me, you know, I laugh a little because I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, they're like, we're going on vacation. I'm like, you're still in your country, you know? <laughs> but, you know, people can uh, vacation in the country, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, to go on another topic, if you were to write a book, right? So, you, you know, you, you mentioned... Yeah. You're, you come from a family of educators, um, even the story of, you know, your dad and his counterparts trying to smuggle books into the, the country. Uh, so if you were to write a book, what would that book yeah. be about? Hmm. I think it would be about my parents. I don't know, that legacy, you know, I mean, it's funny how you're asking me this question as like a hypothetical question, but it's actually something that I'm honestly, I've been thinking about um, just definitely telling my father's story on his behalf um, and having it, you, you know, making it live somewhere. Um, but in order to do that, obviously I need everybody else because I, you know, my time with him was very limited, four months old. I mean, I knew nothing that was going on in life except feeding and hungry and whatever. Um, but I, I really would love to write my dad's story. And then my dad's story is really not complete without my mom. Mm -hmm. So that is the book, not so much on me, but on them yeah. and that legacy. So. Um, yeah. I'll serve as a reader of the first draft. You, I actually, I have, so my friend <laughs> talking about people that talk and then the doers, he's probably like you more, like he's a doer. <laughs> anyway, um, we were talking and he actually, I didn't know he was like a writer, like he's a journalist or whatever. And you know, I told him about how, like, you know, it's it's one of my one of my big goals to um, tell my father's story, and he's definitely like, "Oh, I can write it with you." Who do we need to interview? When do we start? I'm like, 
okay, I'll, I'll call you in two months. <laughs> <laughs> but no 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 but the thing is like it's funny because last i mean what year was it in 2014 um i had to go accept a phd on his behalf um at the university of venda so little things have been happening that have been pushing me to actually say okay you need to actually you know do this thing that you've been thinking about because clearly there's interest there's a mm. bit of momentum going and his some of his friends are still alive because I also would want to get their perspective on how they knew him as a young man and, you know, where did all his ideologies come from and things like that. Um, and then last year in December, there was a, a, a whole episode to pay tribute to him, you know, and it was in such deep venda. I mean, half of it, I didn't even understand. And, I'm, and I was like, where are the subtitles on this? You know, like, meanwhile, I'm in it and I'm like, I, except for where I was talking, I don't know what other people were saying. <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh, <laughs> so anyway, but but I'm like, okay, you know, this story obviously needs to come out. So now I'm 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 more serious yeah. than I was when I first started thinking about this or talking about it. Nice, nice. Yeah. So watch the space, as the kids say, right? Watch yeah. the space. <laughs> True <laughs> facts, right? All right. Yeah. So what do you do in your professional life and is it any different than what you imagined doing as a kid wait say that again there was like a little delay or something okay i said what do you do in your professional life and is it any different than what you imagine or what you dream about doing as a kid oh my life is completely different like i didn't see this <laughs> like i I, I, I didn't, what I'm doing now and where I've landed and wherever I'm going, I really didn't see it. As a kid, I was going to be a doctor, you know? I was going to be a doctor or I was going to be an interior designer. Don't ask me how, you know, those two different things were birthed in me. But, and for a very long time, I had my mindset that I was going to be a doctor. Pretty much until we graduated from college. No, no, even after college. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. Because I, I, I know, you know I, I know, but the people don't know. So. Uh, <laughs> and I wasn't even going to correct you. I was just going to let you live. You know, I was just going to let you live. Whatever you say. Yeah. Oh, man. Even uh, mm. beyond that. Mm. But... I decided I, I pivoted from the whole idea of becoming a doctor and instead I went into public health, um, which I don't regret. I, 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 I think it, it suits me more. And the reason I pivoted and decided um, public health is probably something I'm more interested in is because I really got attracted to this idea of, happen, of helping communities at large um, the health of communities at large than this one-on-one -on -one doctor patient relationship helping one person at a time um, and so to complement that public health I then went on to do my MBA um, and the reason for that was because I, I, I kept feeling I really wanted to start my own um, business, whatever that was, you know, like I, I pro probably then I probably thought it was going to be some kind of organization, um, some public health um, based initiatives and things like that. And, and also kind of linking it back to my dad and that legacy of his. Um, but it's now I'm literally Actually, somebody said this to me, and, and, and it, it, it's, it's so right. I live at the intersection of health and beauty. So I feel like I've, I've kind of carved out my own little space. I'm not the only person in it. I'm sure there are other people in this space. Um, but I, I didn't, if you told me at 12 years old that I would now 
be starting a skincare company, a wellness company, a health company, I would be like, what are you on about? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't even know how to, you know, formulate products. Like, what is that about? So yeah, like childhood and where I am, different. Yeah. Different, but not too different. But, you know, I am still in health, just in a different way. Is there anything, um, I mean, this is actually good. Is there anything that you know now that you wish you learned in your youth? Oh, these are deep questions, man. <sighs> Not to beat myself up. You know, like I said, I, I, for the longest time, I thought I was going to be a doctor, you know, and that's, <laughs> um, it was actually really hard for me to let that go. Even when I knew within myself, I didn't quite see myself being a, a, a medical professional. Mm -hmm. um, it was really hard for me to let it go because I thought then I would be disappointing my mom. I would be disappointing <laughs> anybody I'd ever told that cared about me and was like supporting me towards this goal, you know? And then because, you know, I let it go so much later in my career, like I said, what, when you're doing your master's, how old are we at that point? We're definitely not 20s, mid, mid 20s, late yeah. 20s. Um, I decided to switch careers at, at an older age. And then I started comparing myself to my peers like oh I'm not moving fast enough I'm not where they are you know I'm still not married there's a point where I was like oh my god what's wrong with you all your peers are married everybody has kids <laughs> like you know you're so behind so just to not beat myself up like we're all in different paths you know and we're all going to get to where we need to get to if you just keep your focus on your focus, you know? So I think I've had to learn that and accept it. It's okay for me to be, you know, to get married later or to only start my career a little later than everybody else. You know, it doesn't mean I'm not gonna be successful. It doesn't mean I won't meet my goals. It's okay, but but I think like the spirit of comparison, man, can really kill you. <laughs> it can really, it really can, and like you have to you have to become mature enough to to admit it to yourself first of all, mm -hmm. and then to accept that it's okay. Everybody's on their own path. Our paths mm -hmm. aren't similar, you know. Just because we graduated high school and undergrad together, it doesn't mean everything from that point is going to be at the same time you yeah. know I'm, I'm i'm trying to think what what fuels that uh comparison or oh, is this just something that's built in um you know are we just natural uh like you know just naturally not, not it's not because it's not even com it's, it's not even com competition it doesn't you know it's, it's not, not. Like, <laughs> right uh it's it's more you know just comparing is it shame but is it, it does it stem from shame though like because okay if you and i are successful on the same level whatever like you know like like we've known each other and all along we've known what each other's goals are and we've been keeping track and we we're like we've been focused on our own focus right like mm -hmm. there's no would i be would i be comparing myself to you more or less how could i still you? would probably we shouldn't because we're both succeeding, right? And we're meeting our well, no, goals but, I mean, the, the, I think what I'm trying to understand is, um, you know, because I hear there's a lot, though, the comparison piece. Um, yeah. And I do agree that, you know, if you're constantly comparing anything, you're like, 
it's just, just a sad existence, you know, like, yeah, uh, because, because but, but then even worse, it's even more so when you're comparing, you know, two individuals that are like, you, you, you don't know, there's no way to assess the reason someone has um, succeeded in something or failed in something, right? And to, you know, one of the things, like, you know, as you know, for me, like, I've done a lot of things, you know, and I'm constantly mm-hmm. doing things, right? And mm-hmm. I would lie to you if I were to tell you the reasons why I succeeded in a number of the things I've succeeded in. So I can create a narrative. I can create a story after it succeeded, mm-hmm. right? But yeah, going in, I think everything is going to work. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I think everything uh, is going to work, right? But then, okay, and is you know like even you, know, you hear some musicians talk about this a lot. The artists talk about it, right? Where they will record a song and they know this song. This is their favorite. Like this is when when they when this <laughs> idea came to them, they were like, "Oh, this is it." Right. And then they put it on the album or they release it and crickets. Like, you know, people don't respond <laughs> to it. And then there's this other thing, they're just playing around or whatever it is. And this is and like- Everybody this loves world. it. Yeah, this is like loved by like people like, oh my God. And so then they kind of create this narrative behind, you know, there's documentaries about this this song, <laughs> you know, like it, just, it takes a life of its own, you know? And, right. and so like, for me, I'm always aware <laughs> and probably because, you know, I've, I've done so, like all these different, like any different fields as well. Uh, so it's like, I know how useless it is to compare because yeah. even the person I'm compared to, and it's, this has happened as well, like in, in uh, similar fields where like uh, somebody, like say you and I start in this field, whatever it is, like, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, five, three years later, five years later, you know, I'm all the way here and, and you are here or you even dropped out. And, you know, we talk and you tell me, you know, like some of the things that was going on behind the scenes. And, and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Is a, <laughs> you know, a good example of this is like with, Be- with Bean, for instance, right? So yeah. There were, there were so many companies that had so much more money and backing and all this stuff, you know, like going into the financial crash, like the, the recession mm-hmm. in um, 08. In 09, they all like they were gone, gone completely, <laughs> and so so then and the worst we were still you know we were still there, and so I was wondering I was like, you know, and, and every now and then we we'll talk to folks etc., and you know that's when because I, I just couldn't understand you know and then like so then I'm wondering is it because the way we were structured like you know because we didn't have all the the stuff that's why we right. were able to so like. So then, that's just narrative creating after the fact, right? Because there right. are people who had whatever you want to call it. Like they, they had more fans, they had more customers, they had more supporters, they were in more stores. I mean, you can go down the list. Um, but this is something that always comes up, you know. So I, I like, you know, when I heard you say it, I'm always curious when somebody talks about comparison uh, because even the people you're comparing to, you know, whatever, yeah. like, a lot of times they don't know, <laughs> like, they couldn't, <laughs> if you ask them for the blueprint, they couldn't give you the blueprint. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they could they come up with a bunch of nonsense. Happened. Yeah, yeah, they could right. come up with a bunch After of After the fact. Yeah, of course. But for them to, like, clearly lay that out, uh, is, you know, so, yeah, the comparison thing is, is a big thing, but I, um, you know, I would suggest it's a big thing, but like also, I mean, it's a societal pressure. It's that societal pressure element of it. Yeah. I, 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 I think you know, like, you know, your 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 parents tell you you go to school, and then after you go to school, you get a job. After yeah. you get a job, you find somebody to settle down. It's like for a life that there is no rule book to. There are all these unspoken rules like this is what you gotta do and then if you can do all these things then that's success you know but the thing is nobody tells you that road is not that clear cut you know 
shoot, you might you might go to school, get out, get married, get divorced. <laughs> right. <laughs> go oh, back to school. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, get married it, again. Uh, I mean, it's it's not you know, like you know, it's not guaranteed a straight line. It's it's convoluted. Or, it's, yeah, it's, or none of those things before you. You know what I mean? Like the like exactly. And the thing you're studying is not like you're not interested in it or it's not right. driving you or it's making no sense. It's just you're, you know, accruing a bunch of debt. Uh, that's good. You know, I mean, like, it's, it's just like, you know, <laughs> for so, no reason. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the comparison, exactly. you know, I, I'm hoping with the way, you know, some of the things that's happened in society lately, you know, um, like especially with the ubiquity of. A tech and mm. the you know the constant flow of information that people will you know digest a lot of this and kind of start determining their own path you know and realizing that not being scared to do it too you know yeah. it's okay <laughs> like yeah. it's okay you you are the only person that can make you know, the right decisions for you, yeah. you know, nobody else can tell you what's yeah. right for you, but you know, African parents. Okay. I'll leave uh, it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. That's a whole nother, that, that, that's, that's a whole another, pod, that's another hour. That's another yeah. interview. <laughs> that, that's actually a whole show. Like you can, you, yeah. can just, you can design a show around, you know, you know, African parents. And the whole topic could be Seriously? about like, like your yeah, upbringing <laughs> in a, you know, with an African parent. You can just go to, like, you know, that, that could be your all whole life show. is yes. laid out. Like yeah. all you have to do just show up and do these things. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of these parents, um, what's the most important thing you've learned about money? About money respect money i think my uncle once told me that and i think i was too immature when he said it um well it was because i was asking him for money to pay for a debt that kept chasing after me <laughs> and a credit card debt credit card debt first of all stay away from credit cards if you can't handle money just Anyway, um, and I remember he was like, okay, cool. This one time I'm going to bail you out, but you need to respect money. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, rich people always, you know, giving their unsolicited <laughs> opinions to others. <laughs> no, but you should respect money. I mean, you know, that whole thing about paying yourself first you know, saving. The one thing that I really do, I, I know I'm digressing now, but the one thing I really do want to get into in terms of wealth creation, money-wise, is stocks. Um, you know, I still hear people thinking they can really make money through their savings accounts. And I'm like, have you checked that interest rate lately? It's like the slowest moving interest rate in life. So, you know, respecting money, um, investing wisely, you know, find those things, whether it's real estate, it's stocks, whatever, investing money. And actually, I think lots in the Black community anyway, I think we need to normalize taking, um, becoming financially literate really like if you need to take a class and I'm speaking to myself too if you need to take a class um, or read up on more financial literature to just become more literate then do that you know yeah. but respecting money it does not fall off trees it does not grow on trees yeah so that's yeah. my no, no, that's a that's a topic that I'm passionate about. So I know I, I, I feel like you've you've been passionate yes, about that topic for since we're in college. Well, yeah. probably even before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I met you it was college. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? over twenty years. Um. So yeah, I mean, so 
I, I mean, I have some theories. No, do this. you know we've known each other for over 30 years, Mike? Not 20. Isn't it 30? No, it's 20. It's 99. Yeah. It's oh, <laughs> 20. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe oh. 89 would be like if it was 89. Learn math, guys. <laughs> Learn math. Right. You know. <laughs> So you can understand money. <laughs> yeah, Basics. but you just you just need the basic. You just need basic <laughs> math. You don't need calc or you know, al- you don't need learn algebra. basic you math, need, guys. Yeah, you need addition, subtract, multiplication, multiply, division, divide. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> don't be like me, kids. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, Sorry, um, but you were about to say something. No, no. What I was going to say was uh, I have some theories about the money and, you know, what people call financial literacy. Um, I also think that there's a couple of things. One, there's, uh, there's people who are, um, they just get it, you know, like they're, yeah. they're uh, predisposed you know how some people are predisposed to math, some people are predisposed to sports, some people are predisposed to music or art or whatever it is. Some people, um, some people are, you know, intuitive. Some people are like nurturing. You just go down the list. It's the same thing right. as it applies to uh, mon- like the modern money systems, right? And I think part of what happens is like people get infatuated with those people. Um, and uh, it kind of get lost in understanding the basics. So, for, like for instance, like you know, there's certain people that are extreme nurturers, right? Like you know, like uh, you know, everybody like the grandmother in every neighborhood or whatever it is, like everybody. But you don't see people get infatuated. Oh, I, I need to like be a nurturer <laughs> like her. Do you know what I mean? Like, right, like right, that, that's right. never the case. People understand like, wow, you know, that's that's great. They they can just be understand the basics of nurturing and 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 try to reciprocate some of the things she does uh and they will have a well you know a well-lived life and i think it's the same thing with um with money and finance where um you know i think a lot of people lose their way by trying to like they don't have it you know i I have this conversation (laughs) with a lot of people all the time you know because because like like i've been for like probably the last 10 years i've been working with a lot of folks trying to to get them to that point and what i've learned in that process is that like pe- no the people just don't like there's people who have it and then there's people who don't have it and you know like <laughs> you get you and it's the wrong like trying to get people all the way there is is the wrong thing like i think what it is is people need to have like the basics you know and have things okay. set up and then they move on with their life. Like they're not, these are the people that are not that interested in finance and, you know, um, both macro and microeconomic, like all this kind of, in business. Right, right, right. They're, they're interested in other things, right? Like that's, but it will be great. Like just tell me how to grow my money yes. quickly. I yes. gotta go. Yes, exactly. Right. Um, but I think what happens is like, everyone thinks when it comes to financial literacy, we need everyone to be that, like, we need everyone to be like the, the grandmother, you know, like the super nurturer. Expert, like, no. Yeah, complete, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where I think things get lost because even, you know, with finance and uh, investments and all this stuff, like just the lingo alone is extremely- I was important. gonna say, I think finance in nature is really intimidating. Yeah. I mean, okay, outside of the people that got it. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. no, that's that's exactly it. Yeah, but the rest of us, yep. it's like, oh my God, you yeah. lost me at the, you know, the market is bearish and it's bullish. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. What's like, happening? Yeah. Do I buy and, when it's bullish? Right, right. What? And so I have to catch myself. Like, actually, you know, one of the things, um, there's, a, there's a movement going on now, right? Like where, you know, especially mm-hmm. when the... Um, you know, like when COVID hit and, and the U.S. market crash, and you know some of the international markets crash as well. Uh, in March, um, there was a huge push. Well, one, everyone was home, so there's a huge push where now you know there's a lot of folks talking about investing, like especially in the stock market, right, um, and mm-hmm. real estate and those kind of things. And so there's a lot of online. I mean, the influencer market has 
like just when you know skyrocketed completely yeah. right so there's a mm-hmm. bunch of people um selling this you know this knowledge or whatever you want to call it a lot of them it's like anything if you like you know for somebody like me when i, I like when i look at them i could clearly tell this is like yeah you just you know this is something you learn maybe <laughs> you're on yeah you're, you're, you're on you're, a trend yeah yeah like you learned this last year or maybe like two years ago you know what i mean like so but it's good <laughs> like but for me i actually appreciate them doing this because um it's getting a lot of people interested in the concept like you know like what i in the and finance is one right. of the, what I call the pillars of life, right? Like there's pillars, like mm-hmm. you need to know your health, uh, you know, finance, because these things are going to follow you regardless if you want them to or not. Do you know what I mean? Like so right. if, you <laughs> if you don't take care of them, oh, yeah. if you don't take care of them, if you don't take care of your, you know, your relationships, your finance, your health, trust, it's still going to follow you. <laughs> like you, you can try yeah. to ignore it, but it, it's going to follow you. And so the fact that they, you know, the, these influencers and the different YouTube and podcasts and online personalities, you know, everybody's talking about investing, um, has gotten people, you know, interested in it. Um, and, but the one part I think they, they're all missing, uh, well, mm-hmm. a lot of them are missing is what the part I just said, which is that uh, it would be good if they all realized that most of this is entertainment, right? What they're doing right. is... Because the reason it's entertainment, because for the majority of the audience, the audience is not gonna, like, as soon as, you know, for instance, people go back, like society gets back to its norm, et cetera. And then, and, and, or the market really, you know, the market craters or crash or things are not as exciting or whatever it is, these people are just gonna right. move on. You know what I mean? Like, it's the same, it's the same <laughs> yeah. conversation we've been having for 20 plus years about like working out. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, right. like it's, it literally is the same thing. You know, like some it's people true. are built to like do extreme workouts and physical fitness. And then for most people, you just need to consume a lot less and then walk. Maybe, you know, you run two or three times a week, you do some resistance. That's it. Right. They're not, right. They're not like into extreme, you know, all this. Right. so, so, um, so I think that's one of the things that's missing. Uh, but, you know, for me, you know, I, I think it's great that, you know, uh, there's all these different personalities and, and groups that are pushing, investing in, uh, um, you know, money management and financial literacy. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's through the roof. Yeah. Um, but the piece I think that you all take into account is that um, financial, liter- you know, what they call financial literacy uh misses uh the cue because when people think of it everyone think of oh if i if i like if i know this i'm gonna be bezos or musk or uh <laughs> buffett you know what i mean like like people just go straight no, there you know I like can't. You, no i'm kidding yeah people go straight there and not <laughs> not like not understanding like no you just build it like you build differently like for the, for that single-mindedness is not you. Like you're not. You're thinking of uh, I don't know the latest TV show. Like, <laughs> you know, like you know, all kinds of all kinds of things that have nothing to do with you know the way. And the reason I don't because like, I'm like I'm not even these guys, but I'm I'm closer to them. Yeah. And the way my mind work, like and, and when I'm listening to you talk, you know about the things you're interested in, I was just like. No, like these, it's like it's two different worlds. Yeah, it's like if I, you know, started coming on Instagram tomorrow, having mm-hmm. little videos about, yes. you know, wealth creation yes, or yes. whatever, you like, no, hey, but, never talk to me. No, but Bye. but that that that's like. I mean, well, you like you, 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 I'm sure you check social media. That like, it's crazy. Like everybody's on no, there. No, no. There's, there's somebody we both know. I mean, oh, I'm, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna even. No, yeah, no, no, no. There's yeah. a lot of people. There's yeah. a lot of people. You know what I mean? Like it's not, and it's beyond even the people we know, or you know, like there's, I mean, and the reason, like, I know this because it's like it's the same thing with working out. Like I use that as the perfect mm-hmm. example, right? Because yeah. I've worked out for you know, 25 to 30 plus years, you know, like intense, right? Yeah. I know, I know what it takes to transform the body. You know what I mean? Like, so when somebody comes on 
and you know you and I know what like I know what like hard work muscles look like and I know what cos- cosmetic construction looks like you know so oh, like, man. But, but the thing is 90 percent 95 if you if you haven't been through that right if you haven't if you haven't played say uh you know uh pro sports or collegiate high level sports etc or even like high level high school whatever it is if you mm-hmm. haven't had to train to get your body to a certain point like you wouldn't really understand and, and the masses you don't not. know yeah so when yeah. they see so it's easy to go on instagram or in, anywhere and, and and do the you know and then the workout the workout is like <sighs> you know this is the workout <laughs> and then, this is how you know my butt got this big <laughs> Like yo, you like you you're like if, if people nah. only knew, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm always like, wow, this is so crazy. So it's the same thing. Yeah, and I, I feel like I I for once I understand what you're saying about the working out. I mean, not a, on your level at all. Mm-hmm. I'm not there at all. But like me, literally the highlight of like my what what was it? 2018, I think. The fact that I was able to commit to working out five times a week for four straight months, mm. like, I don't even understand how I did it. Because, I mean, you you know me when I was in college. You try to get us to, like, come work out with you. And, like, we didn't even last a week. And you're like, yeah. they're not serious. Yeah. So, like, even doing four months, being committed every single day, knowing how my body felt I'm like I can I can relate to what you're saying you know like now when I see other people doing whatever on Instagram or whatever I'm like oh that's cute or at home I'm just like that's cute okay keep going it's so cute but but the thing is but if you hadn't had that experience you would look at somebody doing what you know whatever the cute thing they're doing and then they have like the, the, the you know they have the abs and the back and the butt is like I would this. want it and, like, and it, but you would me. you would think that what they're doing is how they got that back <laughs> uh, that butt. true <laughs> you know? so you're like, it's oh, yeah, yeah. so true I, I'll, I'll, I'll pay for whatever whatever you sell it I'll pay. exactly yeah, like, I'm gonna drink your shakes and your tea and whatever no, and no. then nothing happens and we're like six months later and yes. I'm even bigger and I'm yes. like, wow. <laughs> like, and then, you just, I get fatter. Yes, you just drop off, you know, like, um, but, but it's, yeah, yeah it, is, it is that, um, but it's, I mean, yeah, it is the reality. Um, it's crazy. People, man. Uh, it's life. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that, that, that was a funny uh, little tangent. What, what, uh, so let's get back to it. What are, what has been the toughest thing you've had to tackle and will help you get through it? In my life? In your life. Oh, do I have to? Talk? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the toughest thing. It's like, you know, I'm weighing. Do I really want to get deep here? Or do I want to stay on the you, surface? You, you can talk about the second time. You know? Thing, yeah. It's all up to you. The like, people would know, though. The people no. would know, you know, if Which you're giving people? them that real. If you're giving them that real, they can tell. You know what I mean? Like, they can, they can uh, tell. Okay, fine. I'm going to, I've actually been very real and honest with you, Mike. I'm, I feel like I haven't even been, say, I haven't said some of the things I've said today out loud to a bunch of people. Anyway, um, the toughest thing I've had to face is when my mom got sick. Um, I think, you know, it was like, gosh, okay, one parent is passed on. And then the other parent is not well, like what in the world? And I'm an only child, like there are no siblings here to help me. And then also that, so then she um, underwent surgery and I was in school. So it was like, I had to juggle school. I was doing my master's program. I had to juggle school and personal issues at home, but couldn't the, the the I couldn't quit either of them, you know. Um what 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 was the second question? What helped you how did I get through it? Yeah. 
my belief in God, man, like I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I mean, I don't know people out there, you know, if you guys believe in God or not. But for me, it was like praying. It was reading my Bible, just getting my mind right, staying positive. Um, because also as it was happening, my family was all in South Africa. So I didn't even have that family support close by you know so it was definitely tough so tough that eventually I had to like email everybody at home her siblings to be like listen either somebody needs to come and help or um do something you know but but it definitely for me what what got me through was my faith yeah for sure Cool, cool. All right, for a fun question. If you won the lottery tomorrow and oh, snap. if you won uh say 300 million US. Oh, yeah. Come on. What, what would you do? 300 million dollars. Yeah. Do you know how much that is in rent? <laughs> let's start there oh my god oh my god oh my god first of all my company would be sorted like everything that needs to be done company wise everything on the vision board is getting done like that money whatever I would allocate whatever that budget I've worked out for those things to be put it right into the business okay so that's one thing I would still actually do my business, although it sounds like if I had 300 million, I mean, what do I need to work for, right? <laughs> like, but I'm passionate. So anyway, that definitely buying real estate, like all over the place, <laughs> like just all over, all over South Africa, Cape Town or no, 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 no. The, the world. So for me, Cape, okay, in South Africa, it's Cape Town, like bar none, Cape Town. I think just in terms of the value, <laughs> Cape Town real estate is like the sort after real estate on the continent, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, someplace else in the continent, I don't know where else. I, I don't know which country specifically, um, but definitely maybe I, I fell in love with Morocco when I went. I wouldn't mind having something out there and it looks like there's a, a, a like a um, development boom going on anyway I don't know I don't really know wait what happened okay did you see that like the screen yeah. just went I was like what who's who's here <laughs> anyway okay so there's the company there's a the real estate and for my mom obviously buy her whatever house she wants uh -huh. gosh that's not even probably like 10 million dollars uh -huh. right um i feel like oh i would set up a scholarship fund um for south african for just You froze. Can you hear me? Check, check. Yes. <laughs> oh, hi, guys. It's me again. Um, like I was saying before I was gone, um, I definitely would start a scholarship um, for I, I, so initially, before we got cut off, I did just say for South African students wanting to study abroad, but I think I would broaden it to African students, especially specifically women also, um, just because obviously I love that women's empowerment thing. Um, a scholarship can take a chunk of the money, though. Mm -hmm. That might be it. <laughs> yeah. 
real estate business scholarship. Yep. No, that's good. That's a great mm -hmm. list. Is there anyone that you would like to thank or express your appreciation for that, uh, publicly that you haven't had the chance to yet? I have thanked this person privately, so I'm going to do it publicly. And the thanks goes to my one and only mother. Um, without her sacrifices over the years, I would have be nowhere near where I am today. I wouldn't have experienced the life I've been able to experience. Um, her tenacity, her, her, just her will to live. I mean, she, I recognize that what happened to her, um, her husband getting, you know, killed in the way that he did had to have been the most devastating thing she probably had gone through in her very young age. And, you know, she, instead of quitting and, and, and being down on herself, and um, she focused all that energy on raising me. So I'm very appreciative for, for every single sacrifice she's made for me. Nice, and nice. I love her forever and a day. Nice. How do you define success? <sighs> I have to breathe on that one. <laughs> I think it's evolving. You know, when I was younger, I probably, you know, put a lot of emphasis on like finances when it comes to success. Yeah. Um, but now that I'm, I'm older and wiser, I got some grays to show the wise. <laughs> um, I think for me now, success looks like peace of mind, stability. Um, being able to accomplish the goals that I've set out for myself, like the things that I'm really passionate about. And this company that I am busy starting now, I'm really, really passionate about it and, and what it can become and what it will become really. Um, and just being able to impact lives. <laughs> I know I'm saying very broad things, right? <laughs> um, but I want to have an impact on community. Like when people think about me when I'm long gone, I want them to, 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 to like have really good things to say, like she made a difference. Like, and I think, you know, that, that's, that comes from just seeing how loved my dad was. Like he was only 27 when he passed away, but to this day, I'm, I'm 39. So he's been gone for 39 years, but people still remember him. Like they have like the best stories about him because in that short time, he impacted so many lives, you know? So I want to have that same um, legacy, I guess. That's, that's, I, I, I really want to touch people's hearts and lives. So that's, that will be success to me. Nice, nice. Well, this has been a blast. We connected. We politic. I've asked you a bunch of questions. Do you have any questions for me? Oh, dang. Uh, why didn't I write some questions? <laughs> this is okay. Earlier, no, 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 no. I have to come up with a question. Earlier, when I was thinking about this, you know, like, ah, oh, I wonder what he's going to ask me and what I want to talk about, you know, I was like, mm. hmm, I wonder if I can ask him questions, you know? Um, no, I got to ask you a question. I can't just let you get away so easily. Is there any, do you have any regrets in life? Regrets? Yeah. No. I, okay. The caveat is <laughs> the one regret is funny. I actually tell Michael about this a lot. Um, in high school, mm -hmm. well, I mean, I didn't know at, see, the, so I, it's, it's a regret because part of it is it's just um, the lack of knowledge or information, right? So I didn't really know, I, I found out later, and this is, pertains to Pitt. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
in uh you know in high school you take the SAT I mean I don't even know how to do it now but they used to we used to take the SATs and then yeah you know, and it was always on a Saturday right it was always Saturday morning <laughs> yes. like that. yeah and so I um because I could care less about you know you know how I <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't really care, whatever. So the night before the SAT, I go to yeah. uh like I party, you know, like I'm, I'm clubbing mm-hmm. like like it's 1999. You don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a party like it's party of the year. And then and so I leave the the club. I don't even think I slept that because the the test starts at like eight something or something crazy. Uh, I remember we, we we used to have pencils. So anyway, mm-hmm. go straight from the straight from the club. I may have taken a nap. <laughs> go straight from the club and go take the SAT, right? And oh, man. And I just take the SAT. And so then, um, you know, I get my scores back or whatever it is, and uh, you know, do the whole school application, and you get you know scholarships and this and that. And it wasn't actually I didn't even realize until at school talking at to Pitt. yeah at, at, at school <laughs> talking to um uh a, a friend actually a, a, a guy that we went to the same um uh, high school not the same high school but in the same uh area and we also played mm-hmm. ball against each other etc you know so we're competitors um for a while and he was on a uh so I was on uh, partial academic and partial um, athletic sports. Yeah, yeah. He was on only um, uh, academic, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, we're talking, and I was just like, "Yo, you know, I couldn't." I was like, "How?" Because because <laughs> we were also like, you know, we were also those guys. You know how it is, like in high school. There's like the always like the three guys that or whatever. The, the same, it's the same people that have the all metro, all American this, all academic right. this, et cetera, right? Right. You always had the same, we're in the same contest, all kinds of nonsense. Um, so I'm like, yo, we had, you know, he was like, oh, I had, uh, he's like, what? he said something about the SAT. And then he said, uh, his, he's told me what his SAT score was, right? And it was, it was, yeah. 50, it was 50 points more than my score. Right? Are you serious? Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so that, like, I actually found out later. Like, yeah, if I had gotten fifty more points on my on my SAT, yeah, I, w- I would have gotten the full uh, academic. Are you serious? Yes, yes. And so the point of this is, like, I always, I always, I mean, I say it. You know, the regret is like, if I had done that, then you know, even though I played ball, I wouldn't have had to play ball. You know, like. Or right. like a bunch of like a bunch of the things that you know, and then who knows where that trajectory would have went. And so the the regret is really like putting forth the effort, right? Because it's it's what you know, right. our kids is one of the things we always trying to is like you know whatever you're doing, um, don't just walk like just go through the motion, you know. Like I, if if especially if you're gonna do it now, if I had decided to not take the SAT, then of course I can go clubbing and you know and not care about it but right if i'm gonna right. take it then i should come into it you know prepare like even study like i didn't even study like i didn't do all the <laughs> the um like even before the preps yeah like you didn't like, do the like, wow like, like, you know, you know, I'm like i'm like yo you're like, like nah yeah whatever i'm like, in this yes, anyway i'm like i'm like yo who cares you say to you that's the time you know, like whatever and then I found out, you know, later, like a year later. It cost you 50 points, it cost, which then yeah, cost you a full that academic. I mean, that's hundreds of thousands. Of, and then, you know, that compounds over years. And, you know, of so, course. Yeah. So that 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 would be oh, the that's only. That's an interesting story. Yeah, yeah. That would be the, the thing. Uh, if there's, um, yeah, when it comes to regret, I, I think that's the only that's the only thing I can think of. Okay. And you asked me, the last question you asked me, I'd be interested to hear you. Who would you thank? Oh, that wasn't the last question. <laughs> the last question oh. was success. Oh, yeah. Okay. Second to <laughs> last. 
<laughs> Dude, so, I don't know what the internet is doing to me today. Like, wow. Who, okay, so sorry. Your question is, uh, who would I? Who would you thank? And express publicly. Who would you want to thank publicly? Uh, express there's, your. There's there's a lot of people. Gratitude. Um, but okay, I mean, I there's so many people. Because you know the way my my worldview is is that a whole you know everyone I've interacted with has impacted me in a way to lead me to where I am right now mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. literally um, and what I, I you know what I try to do part of the reason I even have this question is this whole idea where people say oh you know give people the roses why they can smell them. Uh, mm -hmm. But people always say that when it's like discussing somebody that's dead. Do you know what I mean? Like it, 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 it's always it always comes up when like you know it's in like retrospect. A, yeah, it's always yeah. in retrospect. Hey, you we need to give people roses. And so I, you know, I said, you know what? Like I'm gonna like tra change this narrative where we start to acknowledge people or you know thank them while they're you know while they're here. And so I'm saying that to say that I do that. Um, like I try to do that just regularly. You know, one of the things I also, um, going back to kids, one of the things is, um, I mean, even the conversation we we're having beforehand about mm -hmm. the, the, um, you know, the makeup of the world, right? There's spectators, mm -hmm. there's critics, mm -hmm. and then yeah. there's doers, right? <laughs> and, I, and my thing is to, um, to not be a, a critic, but to mm -hmm. be, uh, if you're gonna be, if you're not gonna be the doer, to be uh, in a space that you can say thanks, right? Okay. So if if I didn't, if I'm not like I'm not a, a artist, like a visual artist, right, or a musical mm -hmm. artist, and so you know I'm not out here creating albums or whatever it is, <laughs> um, right? And so when someone creates, you know, like someone creates their, th this is their baby, right? Like they spend nine months or a year or two years, whatever, working up this album or a book or whatever it is, and mm -hmm. they put it out there. My role, like, they they did their job. Their job is to put it out there, right? My role right. is to digest that and you know enjoy it or whatever it is. And for me, I feel like the most I should do is to say thanks, right? Like, okay, it, I, I, it. it doesn't help them. The creator by me coming like saying oh you know you missed this i over here you missed this letter <laughs> you know like, like this this character was although important. there are people that thrive on doing no, I, exactly no, but the that, critics yes the critics. that's that's what i'm saying right um <laughs> and so that's an it, it's all you know very around this like the the whole um, you know, saying thanks to people or expressing your appreciation for what they do. Um, so, I mean, I say all that to say, you know, there, there's the obvious, right? Like there's the, the giants in my life, right? So mm -hmm. there's, you know, my mom. Because mm -hmm. um, there's, there's really no, um, the appreciation and thanks can't really, like words can't really, you know, do it justice. You know what I mean? Like yeah, for, for those course. people, right? So like for, for your <laughs> like your close family members, I think, like at least for me, like, you know, my close family members, mom, uh, uncles, aunts, um, uh, you know, Reese, um, mm -hmm. uh, like there's, nothing I can say can really, you know, like, that's why I like, you know, just generally, I just say thanks. Like, you know, like a lot of it's just for the laughter, you know what I mean? Like, like you know I mean? everybody knows me, I'm, I'm laughing at everything. So, yeah, you're gonna be like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's just, it's just like, you know, it's just thanks, there's constant things. But outside of them, right? So what I would say is like outside of people like Reese and moms and all the family members, um, outside of them, who would I say, um so appreciation for um and also actually um you know the family members are on the mountain and then there's the the people that are not family but 
are um, have been hugely, uh, you know, pivotal in the way the things I've learned, etc. Right, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and from afar, like I mean, people I've never met and never will. Most of them are dead, actually. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like from from people like Bruce Lee <laughs> to Bob Marley <laughs> to Thomas Sakura. Okay. You know what I mean? To uh, Nelson Mandela. Like you go down. Like there's all these people yeah. that I, I study that have been right. extremely influential that I've, you know, and a way of me saying thanks is by constantly introducing new, the newer generations to them. You know what it's I mean? Like, so like, yeah. yeah, yeah, so like to the, you know, with the kids or, or even not even just my kids, but, you know, other, and not even just kids, just people. Like, you know, when somebody's talking about something, I'm like, oh, you should check out so-and-so, you know, like check out this piece about uh, Nelson Mandela or this piece about, uh, Thomas Sakara or other, whatever it is. Um, so those people have been, you know, I mean, I can't say thanks enough to those people as mm. well. Um, and then there's, that's what I'm saying to so many people. <laughs> like, so for me, this question, <laughs> it's like, it just goes, you know, and then there's, you know, like, there's like, then there's like the friends. Again, like for me, I, re- I really do think, maybe, it, I, I don't know if it's just me. It can't be just me, but I, I really do think that people like we're not made up of like we are who we are, um, mm-hmm. you know, based on our genetic makeup and, and stuff. But the interactions we have with the world and the people, right. you know, the, the people within the, within the world adds to you know our uh, the complexity of who we are and you know like the layers absolutely you know mm-hmm. who we are. And so it's it's like. But I, you know, actually was interesting when I asked this question, if people yeah. have like, um, I, now nah, I expect the the people in the mountains in your answer, right? right? But right. people, right. a lot of people actually like go beyond the people in the mountains. Like a lot of people would say, oh, you know, this coach um, in, you know, when I was in sixth grade or this teacher in second grade or this, you know, this like janitor you're making me think of somebody okay uh-huh. yeah it's, and so for <laughs> a lot of people, random yeah, yeah 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 and i'm always like wow that's like that's actually impressive <laughs> um because for me it's everybody like like if if you've had yeah that's true if i've had that's some kind true. of contact with you and it's been yeah. you know some sustained contact now, of course, if I just, you know, bump into somebody on the plane and never see them again, that's different. I mean, it, it could still be instrumental, but for people who, you know, have been in my world for, you know, a prolonged period for of time. For years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I say thanks to, to all of y'all, to everyone. So, yeah. Oh. So you're welcome, Mike. You know, thank I know you, you're thank. a better person because you met me. No, indeed, I'm kidding. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, 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 indeed. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm oh, just yeah. kidding. But yep. but actually, I can't. It's it's amazing that our group of friends have been friends for this long. Yeah. I mean, they do say you 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 maintain your college friendships yeah. probably longer. Yeah, I mean, it's different. You know, it's, it's, it's the college friendships. you're older, yeah. right? Like, well, hopefully by then you're like picking people you really <laughs> want to be around and they can influence you to be a better person and you can do that for them too, so. Yep, yep. It's cool. Look at that. I made it. You did, you did. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Mike, for having me. You're welcome. I didn't know, you know, I have to be, I have to be honest and say, I didn't know if you would find me the cool, you know, one of the cool South Africans you were looking for. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And actually on, on that note, you Uh, know, I do, I still do remember uh, that you did ask me to connect you with some cool South Africans. And the feedback on that is I did reach out to people I think are cool who reside (laughs) in South Africa. And it's so funny how people get very weirded out all of a sudden, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, where is this going to be? I'm like, it's going to live online. They're like, oh my God. Somebody literally said, well, I will do it as long as I can coach them. I'm like, I can't coach you to tell you a story about your life. <laughs> like, I'm like, 
How is that gonna <laughs> like literally this guy told me as long as I can coach him, I was like, okay, I think I need to find other people that are wow. you know willing to to tell this. Actually, I should introduce you to the friend, the the friend I mentioned who's gonna help me write my dad's book. Nice. He's very he 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 likes to tell stories. <laughs> he he likes to talk. So anyway, but I will get you some other cool South Africans to join in in the conversation and add a bit of South African spice in there. Nice. You know? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.